Does Jesus care? You bet he does. He's the Son of Man. A ruler once came to Jesus by night to ask him the way of salvation and life. Welcome to the Bible Study Pal podcast. My name is Greg Circle, the preacher for the Church of Christ that meets in Palmyra, Indiana. On today's episode of the podcast, we continue our look at the Gospel according to Mark, the book of the month for January 2023 in our book of the month sermon series for this year. We begin with Mark chapter 4, verse 35, and we start into chapter 5 today. If you have any comments or questions, any thoughts that come to your mind during this study, we encourage you to comment below. Join in the discussion. We'll be looking at the Gospel according to Mark all month in our sermons and in our Bible classes. We encourage you to join us at the times that will be mentioned at the end of the episode. Ye must be born again, again. Ye must be born again, again. I verily, verily say unto thee, ye must be born again. Let's get into the study. Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. Jesus stills the storm. After teaching the multitude several parables and explaining those parables to his disciples, Jesus needs a bit of a break. We often see how Jesus takes his disciples off to the side, withdraws from the crowds, to take some time to rest and give them a heads up about something important. This is one of those times. We also need to remember that Jesus is 100% human as well as 100% divine, but focusing on his humanity, we realize he gets tired. Have you ever slept through a storm? Jesus here did, and he was out in the storm. That's how tired he was. Everything you might do to get a child to sleep, perhaps even get yourself to sleep, we see here. The rocking of the boat, the noise of the wind and sea crashing against the boat, even the nightlight of the continuous lightning. But here we have the theme of today's episode in verse 38. Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? In times of trouble, people often ask, where is God? This is one of those times for the disciples. The boat was being swamped. The professional fishermen have done everything in their knowledge, training, and power to save their vessel to no avail. Are they asking Jesus to do something? Are they commanding the master to start bailing out the water? Are they saying, we have to abandon ship? I'm not sure what that would have accomplished in this instance, but they're the sailors, not me. In verses 39 and 40, we see Jesus' response. Hush, be still. Looking at it, I also wonder if the first imperative is the rebuke of the wind and the second, the statement to the sea. The wind hushed and the sea became perfectly calm. Then turning to the disciples, he said, Peace, be still. Well, he said it in a different way. He turned his imperatives into interrogatives. He asked, Why are you so afraid? He hushed the disciples' fear, or at least he refocused it. Verse 41 says they became very much afraid. He asked them, Do you still have no faith? He caused the choppiness of their lives to come into focus so that it would cease. He gave them a reason to trust him. Before we move on, there's one more point I like to make from this passage. Back in verse 36, we read that there were other boats with them. Other boats were in that very same storm. Other people outside of their ship were in peril. Think for a moment what that means for us. When we call out to Christ for aid, there may be others who are in the same situation as we are. When we have our prayers answered, they do too. Their sea was calmed as well as the disciples. Did they know it? Jesus' care extended outside of the boat he was in. He desires all men to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. When they said, that was weird, did the disciples explain, it was Jesus? When someone says to us, it's amazing that we survived some strange event, do we say, it was Jesus? Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 13. Legion. Here's another unclean spirit, but this one is different. We have a more protracted conversation between him, or as we'll find out, them, and Jesus. This is a man who was so unlovable and so unloved that he was banished to dwell among the tombs. What did they do when someone had died and needed to be buried? He had often been bound with shackles and chains, which he broke, and no one was strong enough to subdue him. I imagine they had multiple strong men to hold him down, bind him, 
fight with him just long enough to commit the body into the ground and leave. Also, imagine the fear of the residents. They were always listening to his agonized screams. Were they getting closer? Was he going to come back into town and do someone harm? Before we go into the differences, we do have a similarity to the first exorcism that Jesus performed in chapter 1. The demon asks the question, What to me and to you? I encourage you to go back to episode 1 for a brief discussion of that question. But this man is different because he runs up to Jesus and bowed down before him. Was there something of the host that survived? Was he such a strong-willed individual that he could almost handle the demons that had come upon him? It took a legion of demons to subdue the man. Or is there something else going on here? Notice also that this demon, or the man they indwelt, note the singular I, he, in verses 7 and 10. He implored Jesus, calling on God's authority to cease tormenting him and not to send them out of the country. Did they think they had a chance? Again, I emphasize the singular pronouns in verses 7 and 10 to point out the pronoun in verse 12. It may not be in our English translations. The NASB, for instance, inserts the italicized words, the demons, as the subject. But Mark's Greek is clear. Verse 12 switches to the plural form of the word implore. They implored him. Send us into the swine. It seems to me that Maybe the man didn't want his demons to leave. Maybe they were his excuse for his behaviors. Maybe he thought they were the source of his might, of his strength. Maybe he was possessed outside of his free will. Or maybe it was his free will that chose to be empowered by Legion. I bring up free will because Legion couldn't just enter the nearby pigs. They had to get permission to do so from the Son of God. Animals were not given the same thing as we humans. We were given something special. We don't just respond with our emotions and instincts, our psyche. We think. We reason. We plan. We forego present small rewards for larger rewards later. We see the benefit of putting energy into something to make it better. We create. We choose. And while we see the damage that the accuser is allowed to inflict on God's faithful servant, Job, to try to make his case... It is only because God allows it and limits it. Why? Job is his servant. He chose to serve God and would continue to choose to serve God. What of the opposite? Could a man choose to make a plea bargain with the prosecution and help the state make the case against a bigger fish in whatever way the prosecutor decides? Could Job have said, You're right. God made me this way. I only serve him for the blessings that he gives, and now that they're gone, I have no reason to serve him. Could he have said that? In the end, God will judge the evidence. But until then, he gives us the evidence of his eternal power and divinity. We choose to follow his evidence. Even though this man may have chosen to follow the lead of Satan, Jesus, the Son of Man, has compassion on him. He may not have wanted Legion to leave, but they knew they had no choice. Jesus allows them to enter the swine as requested, and the swine are immediately drowned in the sea. Jesus may be showing here that this is what these demons do. They are destructive. This man probably immediately notices the difference. Oftentimes that may be the case with us, that once we overcome, with the help of God, a sin that has ensnared us, we only then see how dangerous that sin was. Mark chapter 5, verses 14 through 17. Jesus asked to leave. Others could see that as well. But unfortunately, the residents of this city don't care. They come to Jesus and observe the man no longer naked and raging among the sepulchers, but clothed and in his right mind. The witnesses told them about what happened to their herd, and despite Jesus taking away something that caused them fear, the man they couldn't subdue howling night and day from their cemetery, they chose to look at what Jesus had done to their economy. Could they not rebuild, now with this man's cooperation instead of his opposition? But before Jesus could do any more damage, they asked him to leave, and he complied. Mark chapter 5, verses 18 through 20. Tell your people. The man wanted to go with Jesus. 
he tried to get into the boat with him, and Jesus said, no, go home and report to them. Here we have another difference. So far, Jesus has asked the people he has healed and from whom he has cast out demons not to tell anyone. We've given some possibilities of why that is the case, but what's different here? The difference is he's asked to leave. He's not going to be staying anyway, so the man's witness is not going to bring a whole bunch of people around to keep him from entering the city. It's the residents themselves who are keeping Jesus out. So Jesus leaves a witness. In a place that refused Jesus, a man touched by him can still amaze them with the story of how, despite his desire for the worldly power and demonic strength that was given him, he was helped by the care of the Son of Man. Must be born again, again. Ye must be born again, again. I verily, verily say unto thee. We invite you to join us as we worship our Lord and study His Word each Sunday morning at 9:15 a.m. for Bible classes for all ages, 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. for two distinct worship services, and each Wednesday evening at 6:30 p.m. for another chance to study and discuss God's Word. Occasionally, we may alter the PM service times for a special event. Please check palmyrachurchofchrist.org or our Facebook page for the schedule for the week. If you have any questions or would like to have a Bible study in person or by correspondence, email preacher at palmyrachurchofchrist.org or call 812-364-6215. Thank you for listening.